it doesn't matter how good of a drug either repurposed or on label is for cancer. If you are allergic to it, you should not be taking it or be given it or if you're sensitive to it, because obviously that's going to have a very bad outcome that you just don't need. Hey, I'm Dr. A. I use this channel to answer questions that we get and questions I get from patients and family and people all over the internet. I've been researching and teaching in the integrative and naturopathic medical communities for over 30 years, and I've been in practice a long time, and I get asked lots of questions. So today I want to get into a question we got, and this is going to be big picture, and we'll get into other things that are a little more specific in other videos, but I get a lot of questions about repurposed drugs for cancer because I teach about that. Part of my practice is integrative oncology. So we use these things and we monitor them and all that. So the questions, of course, are very common. The first thing I want to get into is repurposed or off-label drugs and cancer therapies include lots of different types of drugs. The one I want to talk about here shortly is anti-parasite drugs that are also used as repurposed or off-label drugs in cancer therapy. So the first thing is, why would we use something, quote, off-label or repurpose this sort of new modern euphemism for off-label use of drugs? Well, currently in the United States, for the most part, any drug that's approved for one thing can be used for an off-label purpose if the physician clinician decides that that is medically indicated. So you can have a drug that's approved for one particular thing in medicine and it might be wind up being used for a whole bunch of other things. And that's the normal course of pharmacology and medicine. So in repurposing drugs, it's another way of saying using it off-label because most of these drugs are not labeled for cancer treatment, generally speaking. Because there's lots of categories of repurposed drugs, for instance, some blood pressure medicines are repurposed cancer drugs, some blood cholesterol medicines are repurposed cancer drugs, some anti-inflammatory drugs are cancer repurposed drugs, etc. I just wanted to bring up the anti-parasite category of drugs, which is heavily represented in the off-label or repurposed cancer drug treatment protocol world. So the first thing is, why in the world would a anti-parasite drug, number one, be thought of to be used in the world of cancer, but also why might it work? What would it help, etc.? So the first thing is that it's not uncommon to see anti-infective drugs used alongside other cancer treatments for the general reason that some cancer treatments might help you be more open to infections. So we have to give you anti-infective drugs to counter that. So that's sort of the obvious reason, right? A little bit, though, more below the surface is most drugs that are anti-something, so like an antifungal, an antiviral, antibiotic slash antibacterial, anti-parasite, all of these actually are used in the repurposed drug world for cancer for not the infectious part. So what do they do beyond being anti-infective? Like, why do I see this drug that should kill parasites being given to my cousin for cancer? Well, most of the anti-drugs, whether it's antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal, antiparasite, etc., have other immune functions that they do. They're just not popularized. They're not talked about a lot till recently. Anti-parasite drug category, of which there's many subtypes and all that, are used primarily as immunomodulators. So you might then say, well, why would immunomodulation help cancer? Part of what drives cancer forward is the immune system getting off balance and the cancer cells and the cancer microenvironment, the area that keeps the cancer cells working, and then the immune crosstalk between normal cells and cancer cells, that all gets kind of skewed into a pro-cancer immune modulation that's not good for you. So things like antiparasitic drugs are sometimes given to help push back against that negative immune modulation, the bad for you immune modulation to help you have have more balance and calm down that pro-cancer drive. 
Quick plug here, if you're a healthcare practitioner working with patients with these issues, I have a CE website and I do webinars on this topic and others. So we're going to put a link in the description below to the CE website link and the particular webinar of interest. Thank you. So sometimes what you see on you know social media a lot or whatever is somebody will assume, well, because it's an antibacterial drug or antiparasitic drug in case what we're talking about right now, then does that mean that the parasite that that drug kills are what cause my cancer. And that's usually not the case. I know people disagree with that. But there are associations with lots of infections and cancer. That's not debatable fact. That's very common. And in more advanced cancers, you see lots of other infections that are, you know, around and are doing what? Infections also throw off your immune system. And it turns out that chronic infectious things can push you into the immune imbalance that is pro-cancer. So it's not necessarily that the infections created a chicken and egg sort of thing. The anti-parasitic and the other anti-drugs are given as immunomodulators to oppose what is pro-cancer in the immune imbalance that's going on. Now, because things are popularized, you know, now, especially we have the internet, things go around the world in milliseconds, and something that gets popularized and goes around is, well, there's, you know, this one off-label or repurposed drug is good for cancer. Well, it might be. But what we find in clinical practice is because we're trying to rebalance immune function and inhibit the signaling things that go on that trigger a pro-cancer environment, usually that is not done with one drug driving the whole bus, as it were. So a lot of times you'll see a particular drug, whether it's something like mabendazole or its cousin albendazole or fenbendazole, those guys, or ivermectin or any of the other drugs, chloroquine family, all of that stuff, you'll see one of them kind of get a lot of spotlight in the repurposed oncology community. And, you know, they do work in that world. What we find clinically usually, and there's emerging research on this, and usually this goes along with the emerging research, is if you use a balance of repurposed medications and then other things that we do, you get more immunomodulation towards the anti-cancer side of the ledger. So while one particular type of drug, maybe a category like the benzimidazoles I mentioned, or ivermectin, which is an avermectin drug or others, they all might have a role to play. We might rotate them, we might use them together or in some sort of sequence so that each one does its own special thing and helps be anti-cancer. The other thing that that allows clinically is for you in using a repurposed drug to not try and do all the work with one drug. It allows you to lower the dose of each of the drugs and use them as sort of a little symphony of immunomodulators. That makes the dosing more safe for your body and it makes the side effect profile lower. So what are the cautions that we have to be careful around repurposed drugs, etc.? Well, any drug that you use, if you're on chemotherapy, there's plenty of cautions. If you're on an antibiotic, there's plenty of cautions, et cetera. But the biggest cautions are, number one, what does that drug normally do? And what are its usual side effects? So if I give you a repurposed cancer drug that's a blood pressure drug, there are those, what am I concerned about? I might be concerned that your blood pressure might go too low. That can be very bad for you. So I have to monitor that, watch the dose. What if I give you an antibiotic or an antiparasitic drug like we're talking about here? Well, we have to consider that you may already have parasites in your body or bacteria or something that are going to die, and that might give you side effects. It might be digestive side effects, might be pain, inflammation, whatever else. So we just have to look at what does that drug do not in cancer when we use it and just monitor for the side effect. Now, normally, because of this kind of symphony collage effect of using multiple drugs at lower doses, we don't get as many of these side effects, but they certainly have to be monitored. The other thing is it doesn't matter how good of a drug either repurposed or on label is for cancer. If you are are allergic to it, you should not be taking it or be given it or if you're sensitive to it, because obviously that's going to have a very bad outcome that you just don't need. Well, I hope this quick little entree in antiparasitic drugs repurposed for cancer helps, being that they are in the immunomodulatory class. So we usually use them together with other drugs and usually less of each one does more of the job overall. I think this is an area as we move forward in the coming years and decades where this is going to be a growth area for anti 
anti-cancer treatments, for cancer remission treatments, et cetera. Obviously, we're going to do more content on this, but I really wanted to get this one out because it's just such a common question that we get. All right, I'm Dr. A. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all of you who have subscribed. Please do notifications, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you all in the next video.